Wow, that last guy, he was really impressive. Well, he was cocky enough, that's for sure. Yeah, but you know, what I've read about his, uh, his father, I'm not surprised that the kid knows so much about international trade, especially with the Russians. Sapiti so doesn't speak the language, though. Ah, uh, language. She can learn that easily enough. That's no big deal. I got the impression he knows a lot more about business than he does about law. Yeah, you know what really impressed me about that kid? His golf score. It's amazing for such a young guy to have such a great score. But the thing is, he's bright, he's energetic, a real go-getter. And we need more guys like him around here. As far as I'm concerned, he goes straight to the A-list. Why not? He's like every other person on your A-list. All right, who's next? Oh, not another girl. Seems like every year we do these interviews, there are more and more women lawyers applying. Where do they all end up? Brad, you're asking me that question? No, hey, come on. You know that it's not that many women who are prepared to tough it out in private practice. If you look around, where do they go? They go to government, they go in-house, or they just quit the law entirely. And you wonder why. Oh, no, it's, I know you can't necessarily blame them. I mean, long hours, 12, 14 hours during the week, often weekends. It's just not for everybody. It's just for, you know, maniacs like us guys. Baloney, you guys thrive on it. It's a rush. And besides, many women like it too. But some don't feel the need for it. And frankly, they're probably the smart ones. And in your case, my friend? Don't go there. It's none of your business. But really, I mean, if anyone's going to change his profession, it's not going to be the men. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, it's 5 o'clock already. I'm supposed to pick up the kids. Sorry, I'm just going to make a quick call to Sally. Anyway, where did this uh, woman go to law school? Queens, honors, top 10%. What, did you memorize all this stuff? Oh, hi, sweetie, it's me again. Sorry to do this to you once again, but I'm stuck in interviews here, so could you uh, organize yourself to pick up the kids? Sorry about that. I'll try and make it home as soon as I can. Okay, love you, ciao. Anyway, how come I don't see any of these CVs anymore? Do they all go to you? They do, because that's what you said you wanted last year. You told me to do the pre-selection. Oh, it's a good thing I didn't ask you to do the final selection, or we'd end up with a coven of women lawyers at the firm. I mean, look at this person. She's involved with half the women's groups on campus. She was even on the board of directors of a shelter. When I was at Queen's, there wasn't any women's shelter. Not that, not that I remember, anyway. And you'd know about that, would you? Look at her grades. And look at the classes she took. Intellectual property, technology law, securities law, and she's got business experience in South Asia, Bangladesh, Pakistan. These are places that we're getting more and more clients from. And she's trilingual, English, French, and Hindi. Now that's impressive. Hey, uh, Hindi, you know what? I remember this woman. I had met her at the law faculty. There was a conference I was at not that long ago. She's uh, quite the babe, too. Eh? And we were talking and uh, having a great chat, and then Lo and behold, she ends up being the uh, chairman of the panel I was on. But then, whew, boy, what a ball buster she is. Fred, why is it that the women are always the ball busters, but the men are tough? Oh, Jillian, let's not go there again. You know what, come to think of it, since we've already got you on our team, we don't need some other feminist pinch hitting when you're not around, when you're on holidays. I don't know. I think we should just tell Miss Chikifu to take a pass on it. Uh, nice. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Nice. Bring her in. Bring her in. Pauline, can you ask Alana Roberts to come in, please? Look, Fred, I know you're reaching to get out of here, but we've got to do this properly. And in my humble opinion, she's a very strong candidate. Take a look at her on-campus interviews. So please, try to behave. All right. Alana? Yes. Hi, Jillian Richardson. Hello, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. This is Frederick Coffey, one of our managing partners at the firm. Oh, hello, Mr. Coffey. It's hello, nice to see you again. I don't know if you remember, but we were on the same panel yes, together I do last November that. talking about hiring practices and law firms, of all things. So I remember we stirred up quite a discussion. Yeah, we did, actually. It was a lot of fun that day. Well, I certainly thought you were courageous holding your own against that tide of opinion. Well, thank you. Well, Mr. Coffey's known for that around here, too, I must say. Why don't you have a seat, Alana? Okay, thank and, you. And uh, maybe you could start off by telling us why you're interested in our firm. Simply put, I'm looking for a firm where I feel I can pursue my various interests. I did lots of research at the library and on the internet, and more than any other, this firm struck me as being a good fit. 
I have a real interest in writers, so copyright law is something that I would really like to explore and develop. And I note that you have a substantial clientele in that field. Law involving internet technology and computers is also something that fascinates me. It's really a whole new world of law that's opening up. I'm also keenly aware uh, of new... Sorry, Alana. Sorry, just, uh, sorry to interrupt. What you're saying is, is interesting, and uh, we'll get back to it. But uh, as when I was looking at your CV here, um, I mean, one of the things that clearly comes out is this interest you have in social issues. Can you explain that to us a bit, please? I take it you're referring to my involvement with the women's shelter and other women's groups yeah, exactly, on campus. Yeah, exactly. Yes, those are things that matter to me. There's no shortage of inequalities out there, and it's uh, nice to be able to help to redress that. For the women's shelter, I help them set up a new board of directors and also get them out of the red. Um, I'm sure you know that life at law school, much like the profession, I suppose, can be pretty blinkered at times. So it's nice to be able to combat that. Well, look, if you're going to be a crusader, that's one thing. And, uh, you know, this wanting to change the world is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a valuable thing. But on the other hand, I'm not sure you're going to have a lot of time for that here at this firm. The, we have long hours and, uh, you know, 12, 14-hour uh, days, often weekends. It has a huge impact on your social commitments and on your family life. How do you think you're going to cope with all of that? Oh, I'm well aware of the hours, and let me assure you that I'm no crusader. It's just that, well, when things aren't quite right, I like to try to make them better. It was one of the reasons why I went into law in the first place. Yeah, and I remember you made a, that point when we were on that panel together. And, you know, some people see law as a noble profession, trying to make the world a perfect place. but. Like, you know, Jillian, really, the practice of law at the end of the day is really a business, and most people are in it just to make a buck. Yes, I understand that, and ultimately, getting back to your initial question, Ms. Richardson, that's also why I'm here. Well, I agree that we definitely need to see some change in this profession. Um, but to be frank, Elena, few firms are prepared to grant the time for that, and few lawyers, especially young ones, can afford to give it. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your interest in South Asia? I see you spent some time there, and uh, what did you do there? Yes, well, before going to law school, I took a year in order to go to Bangladesh, and there I worked with various NGOs which dealt with uh, family planning and literacy. And then my work in Bangladesh got me to uh, India and Pakistan. I must say it was uh, a very eye-opening experience. You know, that's very interesting because uh, that's a part of the world where we're developing quite a clientele uh, over the last few years. But, you know, one of the things you have to acknowledge, Alana, having lived there, I'm sure, is that uh, it's a very conservative society, particularly with the role of women. In fact, there isn't much of a role for women outside the home. Uh, we found that our clients from that part of the world are invariably men. So um, how would you cope with that? I've dealt with lots of people from South Asia, and I'm not worried about doing business with them. Yeah, but what, for, let me give you an example. What if we had some, a, a group of clients in from out of town here in Toronto, and I mean, these guys make no bones about it. They, they prefer to work with men during the day and socialize with women at night. And like, how would you cope with that kind of situation? Well, first of all, I know lots of men from South Asia who have no problems doing business with women, and I know that because I've done it. And secondly, I am a big girl, and I know that there's more to law and business than signing papers or sending bills. Since I assume we're not talking about an escort service... No, of course not. Let, let's, let's talk about something else. For example, what about family life? I mean, the hours here are so grueling. What if, what if you are married and you have children, children are home and want their supper? Or even if you're not married, you're single, you're working hard at the firm, you get involved with a guy, he gets jealous about all the time you're spending at the firm. How are you going to handle that? Well, let's just say that I have no problem in separating my work life from my private one. I've been doing it for years, and I dare say that most women are so used to juggling those two acts at once that this will be really nothing new to any working woman. Would you not agree, Ms. Richardson? Absolutely. But try telling him that as he rages about the lack of testosterone on our hockey team. Anyways, why don't you tell us a bit about your interest in computer law? Okay. Excuse me, ladies. I don't wish to be rude, but I, I really do have to run. So, Alana, thank you very much for coming in. It's good to see you again. Uh, thank you. And, you know, you might give some serious thought to government, because like it or not, around here, we act for a lot of people who you might call the bad guys. Anyway, give that some thought. 
Jillian, we'll talk tomorrow. I'll let you ladies chat. Good night.